Move, what's good? I have the pleasure of speaking to the afternoon crowd, the evening crowds. I know in the morning time, y'all not as lively, I'm assuming, or y'all just as lively? Just as lively? Okay, great. Well, I'm going to remind you, my name is Joseph Solomon. We're going uh, to gonna have a good time tonight, I hope so. Uh, like I said, I'm from, I'm from Chicago. I live in Chicago. I'm from Texas. Where are the places that y'all are from? Because I haven't been with y'all this week, so yell it out real quick. Where are you from? Florida. Go Cubs, baby. I see you, bro. Cubs? All right, where else? Where are you from? Huh? Nashville. What's it? Nat? Nashville. All right, where we at? North Carolina on the radio. Thank you, sir. Where else? Florida? Florida, okay. The South. Y'all playing that on three. One, two, three. Indiana! <laughs> They, they playing. All right, all right, cool. Okay, so we got Midwest. We got some South folks in here. Huh? Georgia. Georgia? Georgia. Okay. I'll be in Georgia next week. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So I know where y'all are from. Uh, real quick, just remind, remind y'all, if y'all see me out, you know, walking around or whatever, remember, turn to your neighbor, say six. Six, seven. All right, we got it clear. Okay, good, 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 good. So I told you I'm a spoken word artist. I do some poetry and whatnot. Uh, let me hear you snap your fingers like this real quick. Don't do that. I hate when people do that during poems. I think it's so corny. Uh, <laughs> so we're not going to do that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, this is a way for me to sort of break the ice. Y'all get to know me. I get to know y'all. I think this poem is also going to sort of uh, give a nice segue into the topic that will be on tonight. So hopefully it'll... Uh, Make you laugh, make you cry, make you think heavy stuff or whatever. Y'all good? Y'all ready? Let me just snap your fingers one more time. Y'all not listening. See, y'all not listening. I told you. We need to. All right, here we go. Not a day went by in my childhood that my skin was not decorated with scabs of honor and glory. I was proud that I played hard. I wore wounds like badges at a military banquet. Proof that I was a real boy was the marks on my face and nose from diving headfirst into pavements that hit back harder than the truth. On the first day of school, I ain't know which to show off first. My new shoes, them Kobe's though, I that or the skin peeling on my leg from last week's bicycle accident, and I couldn't wait for it to scab over so I can pick at it. Yes, I'm one of those people, but I don't eat them, that's gross. I'm not one of those people. I was fascinated by my body's ability to make itself whole again whenever a piece of it left. Every neighborhood I lived in, I literally left pieces of me in the streets and in the yards. I'd come home, stumble into the bathroom. My mom would pour two shots of alcohol into the gash. I couldn't tell y'all which hurt worse, the falls or the alcohol, but at least I loved the way it sizzled on my skin but still stung, right? My mom smiled at me. Maybe next time you'll be more careful. Maybe next time, mom, you'll buy the Band-Aids with the Ninja Turtles on them because these plain brown ones are boring. Maybe get X-Men. Wolverine's mutant powers could help me heal faster than the average human. She told me, she told me, don't pick at it. It only makes the healing process longer. Don't call her. Stop stalking her Facebook. It only makes the healing process longer. <laughs> funny, funny I grew up and still tried to use alcohol to clean my wounds. This time as an effort to take away the sting. One time, I fell in love. All right, so like two times, I fell in love, right? <laughs> I couldn't tell y'all which hurt worse, the falls or the alcohol. My mom smiled. Maybe next time you'll be more careful, be more prayerful. Mama, I've been more careful. Okay, mama, I'm not raising my voice to you. I'm sorry, I'm not raising my voice. <laughs> I'm just scared to scar again. I'm afraid people will laugh at the way I bleed. These scars and scabs have made me fearful to commit to love people. Somehow simmered me to be safe and distant, which is good in some way, but y'all, life and love are risky, and we let our wounds win when we won't dare the danger again. See, scars is what makes us human. Scars is what makes you human. Scars is what made God human, Jesus. After all the pain and rejection, still the only thing he couldn't commit to was a grave. Y'all, 
Wear your scars like a new necklace on Easter. Show them this is what real resurrection looks like. No fear in love and no shame and rejection. Thank you. Yo. All right, so real quick, my mans, can you see me? You good? It's dark in here. You got sunglasses on. We got a hoodie on. It's raining. Everything. You got to go through all the weather today. Okay. <laughs> so real quick, all right, I'm a little unorthodox. So today we're going to be talking about forgiveness in the cross, which is why I chose to do a poem about scars and how this points to the scars that Christ bore for us. And I hope that I can make this relevant and real to you tonight, relatable to you tonight. We're going to talk about forgiveness in the cross, okay? And first thing about forgiveness, when we talk about forgiveness and how that ties in with our failures, we have to understand from God's perspective, forgiveness for our sins is necessary. What is sin? Sin is essentially, the word sin comes from the idea of playing like with a target or whatever, right? You know, the target, you know, like, a, like the logo that the store uses that I go and spend too much money in because I don't ever go in there with a list. I just walk in with money. All right, so target, and you throw a pin at it, right? You throw the dart at it or whatever, and you miss the mark, right? So, so many times in our life, we miss the mark. We're throwing this pin. We're throwing the dart at this target, this target that God has set for us, his ways, his commandments, what we know to be right, what we know to be wrong. We throw the dart, and we miss it often, a lot. If we're honest with ourselves, we miss the mark a lot. And so God says that forgiveness for those sins has to be necessary. And this is something that I struggled with when I was in college. I went off to college. I was raised in the church. How many of y'all was raised in church? Put your hands down. How many of you were not raised in church? All right, cool. So maybe we have similar ideas in the sense of like some of you weren't raised in church, you have questions, or some of you raised in church and still have questions. I was in college. And I remember thinking, I was having all these questions about the Bible, about God. Is this stuff even really real? And if God wants us to forgive people, why, why, is, it, why is it that he need, needs for us to believe in someone dying on the cross for our sins? Why did Jesus have to die on the cross for our sins? Why couldn't he just forgive the same way he tells us to forgive? Why is the forgiveness necessary? Well, I'll give an example. For one, in the Old Testament, right, they would have these animals that they would sacrifice, you put your sins on them or whatever, with lambs and so forth, and they would pay for the sins, right? And they would send them out, call them a scapegoat. They send them out of the city sometimes. It's called a scapegoat, right? And this idea of that, these sins, when you fail, when you do something wrong, you create a debt and somebody has to pay for that. Example, I got a new iPhone yesterday. I'm terrified because I have no case on it right now. How many of y'all got cracked phones out right now? Yeah, right it's not a badge of honor, sir. I don't know why you did it's like, yes, I cracked my phone. And parents are like, yes, he did it again. All right, you got to pay for it, right? I'm scared to even hold this right now. I'm holding it with two hands because it has no case on it right now, right? How many of you were the ones that broke your phone? Yeah. How many of you had your phone broke by somebody else? Yeah. You're still mad about it, ain't you? You put your hand up real fast. I said, like, yes, yes. His name was Jen Jonathan. All right, so, so think about this. I have this phone, right? I let my friend use it. Like, yeah, you can use my phone real quick. And he drops it. Concrete, right? Ugh. Or even worse, water, right? Well, if it's an iPhone 7, you're good. But he drops it, cracks it. <laughs> and you have a couple of options at this point. One, you can say, yeah, I'm going to need that money, bro. <laughs> I'm going to need you to pay for that ASAP, OK? It's a cracked phone. I don't have no warranty on it, OK? It costs $329 plus tax. I know, I've done it twice. I hate it every time I go into the Apple store, right? It costs money to fix this phone if you crack it. You need to pay me that money. The other option is, y'all can go half on it. Both of you can put some money in for it, right? Another option is this. Probably the most difficult option is to say, man, you know what? Don't even worry about it. I'll pay for it. I got it. He laughing like, that ain't me. <laughs> No, sir, I ain't got $329. <laughs> you got iPhone money? Okay. It says, I'll pay for that. I'll pay for that. See, the thing is this, that the phone is cracked, and you can say, yeah, it's okay, don't worry about it. But the problem is, 
something still has to pay for it. Just because you said it's okay doesn't mean that the debt goes away. Somebody has to pay to fix this. And so the same way with God, he says, you know what? You failed. You dropped the ball. You dropped my laws. You dropped my morals, my commands. Somebody got to pay for it. And the cross is this. You don't have to pay for it. I got it. I got you. I pay for it on the cross. He sends his son to die on the cross to take our sins away. Forgiveness is necessary. Forgiveness in this sense is necessary. And it points to my next point, though, is that forgiveness is also painful. Forgiveness is painful. Why? Because it costs somebody something, right? Somebody has to pay for that, and it costs a lot of money. It hurts to forgive somebody. Think about somebody right now in your mind. Think about somebody that's done you wrong, and you have to forgive them, right? One, they hurt you. That in itself hurts enough. But then to say that it also, I'm not going to even make you pay for that. I'm not going to even. Think of all the things that some people, I know some people have gone through some rough things in here, whether it be abuse, whether it be lied on, cheated, abandoned by family members, fathers, mothers, cousins, whatever it may be, people that weren't there for you. I, I, I got to forgive them? That's hard. Somebody has to take the debt from that. And, yes, and forgiveness is saying, you know what? Don't worry about it. I got it. I got it. I'll pay for it. And it's a very difficult thing to do, to have to pay for someone else's sin. But here's the thing as well, though. Forgiveness is final. Forgiveness, open up your, your phone or your Bible, your apps, whatever you may, whatever you may look at on the phone. And go to John chapter 19, verse 23. And I'll wait a few seconds, but I'm going to start reading before y'all. And this is to show that forgiveness is painful, but it's also final. It says, this, this is Jesus on the cross now. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus... They took his garments and divided them into four parts. One part for each soldier, also his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture that says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things, by st but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of, of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. And look at this part here. After, the, after this, Jesus, knowing that, all, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, he said what? It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. We see here that forgiveness on the cross was a very painful thing. Not only was he put on the cross nailed, bruised, whipped, but he was also humiliated. They scorned and mocked him. Say, hey, if you, if you the son of God, get yourself off the cross. You're so big and powerful. Get yourself off the cross. They mock him. And it's painful. But even through all that, he says, it is finished. See, real forgiveness is final. Real forgiveness is final. If you forgive somebody, like really forgive them, it's final, it's done. This is how you know you haven't truly forgiven somebody yet because you still wish bad things happened to them, right? When you say stuff like, I forgive them, I wouldn't mind if they fell down a flight of steps a few times, but I forgive them, right? <laughs> right? You're still holding that against them. You're still holding a debt against them. It's not finished yet. And so forgiveness is a final thing. That's why Jesus says, it's finished. What does that mean? What does he mean by saying it's finished? He says, what I came to do was to now tear down this wall that was between God and man, the sin that we had, all the things that we do wrong, all our failures, everything that we've done wrong. Those things that they separate us from God. And he says, you know what? I'm here to close the gap. That's my mission is to close that gap. And now I fulfill the mission. It is finished. Your 
Your failures are not final, but forgiveness is. Your failures don't define who you are. Even if you failed last night, <laughs> even if you failed this morning, think of all the things that you've done. Forgiveness is final for those things. Jesus says it is finished. There's nothing that needs to be done anymore, which is why also forgiveness is free. Forgiveness is free and freeing. What do I mean by that? Forgiveness is free and freeing. First off, you can't pay for forgiveness. That defeats the purpose of calling it forgiveness. Otherwise, it's just paying your own debt. If you break my phone and you say, here's the money for it, I don't have to forgive you. You paid it. It's done. You paid the debt. You got iPhone money. But here's the thing. We ain't got SIM money. <laughs> we don't have enough money. We don't have enough good things that we can do to try to conjure up some things like, man, you know what, I'm going to start. I know I was watching pornography a few months ago, but it's been a while since I've watched pornography. That's cool. But the fact that you've been staying away from pornography for a few months doesn't wipe out the fact that you've watched it before. I haven't lied in a few weeks. That's cool. That's cool. But it doesn't wipe out the fact that you've already lied. Keep going down the list of every sin that you've done. There's not enough that you can do down the line to say, okay, I've done enough good things. Now I've paid for what I've done. You can't. Forgiveness is free. But it's also freeing. Because there's now no condemnation. There's no shame for those of us who trust in Christ. See, it's freeing in this sense that now when I do good things, the way I'm trying to live my life is not to try to, it's not to, try to find acceptance from God, to somehow make sure that he likes me now. A lot of times that's what we try to do. I'm trying to do, I'm, I've been going to church now, I've been going more consistently, I've been studying my Bible, right? You're following a whole bunch of Instagram accounts that got pictures of Jesus on it now, whoop de doo right? Okay. You got a whole bunch of Christian hashtags. That stuff, that don't do nothing. <laughs> that don't do nothing to make you accepted by God. Everything that was needed for you to be accepted by God was done on the cross. And it's freeing because now I don't have to work for this anymore. The Bible says that it is by grace, grace alone, that we are saved by faith. That grace is found on the cross. Everything that we've owed God, I don't owe God anything. That's a bold thing to say. I don't owe God anything. And if you trust, in, if you trust that Jesus died for your sins, you don't owe God anything. And so now, the reason why we do good things is not to try to make God love us. But we do good things because God loves us. We work from the victory, not for the victory. Because forgiveness is free, and it's freeing. And so all these failures that loom over your head, things that make you shameful at night, that you cried about, you look real cool in front of people. Y'all, I know y'all came here happy and stuff, but I know some of us got some dark demons in the closet. You look cool on the outside. You look good on the outside. But really, you got some things going on in the inside. And they loom over your head at night and in the morning. That condemnation, that shame. And if it's not you, then it's your friends that mock you. Or even Satan that would mock you. Oh, you trying to do the Christian thing now. Oh, you're a Christian now. Oh, you got your, you got your Bible. That's cute. You got all the Bible apps now. You got, like a, you got a group on your iPhone for Bible stuff. That's real cool. That's cute. But I know how you are. This ain't nothing but a phase. You know how bad you are. This is how the enemy, this is how our friends would mock us, people that have seen how bad we've been in the past. And they're like, you, try, you a Christian now? Really? They would want to condemn us. But here's the thing. I can look to the cross and say, man, look, Jesus said it's finished. So I don't care what y'all say. You can say, whatever you want to say about me, I'm accepted. That's how I'm free. That's how I know I'm free. Because everything that I've done has now been paid for. And I can look to the cross and it said, it is finished. You are accepted. Nothing can, sep nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of the Father. Nothing can keep you from God. Why? Because Jesus said it is finished. If it wasn't finished, then the gospel wouldn't be good news. It'd be good advice. It'd be, 
yo, Jesus died, but here's some things you got to do to make sure you get into heaven. I got some rules. Here's some suggestions for you. You can do this. You can listen to this podcast. You can abstain from this sin. You can do all these things to try to accept, uh, get acceptance from God. It's, the gospel is not good news anymore. It's good suggestion. But news is something that happened, and you can't change what happened. It's a historical thing that happened. It historically, factually happened. Jesus died on the cross, and he said, it is finished. That's not a suggestion. That's a proclamation. It's not advice. It's a declaration. It's saying, this is done. Ain't nothing you can do about it. I love you. Ain't nothing you're going to do about it now. You're in my love. It's final. Forgiveness is necessary. Forgiveness is painful. Forgiveness is final, and it's freeing, and it's free because of what Jesus did on the cross when he said, it is finished. Amen? Amen. So I want to do this. I know we're thinking about all our failures tonight, and I know I'm a failure. Sometimes I'm like, man, I don't even know why I'm up here. I I know this is good news. I can't be giving good suggestions because I'm not a good person. I know how bad I am, okay? It's by grace alone that I'm saved. And I preach this news because this is what saves me. And so even the failures that I have in my own mind, you think about the failures you have in your own mind, adults as well. Y'all know y'all ain't perfect either. (laughs) Adults, students as well. Think about the failures that you have, the sins that you've committed against God. But even in the ways that you found failure, how people have failed you. Not just how you fail God, but think of the ways that people have failed you and how that's holding you back. Think through that. And I would say this. The way you failed God is rectified and made right on the cross, and the way that people have failed you is also made right on the cross. Why? Because now, no matter how many times people have failed me, I know that Jesus succeeded He succeeded when he said it is finished. Think about the way that people have failed you and the way that you failed God. And tonight, what we're going to do is we got some canvases on the sides of these walls here. And this is going to represent something. This right here is the cross of Christ. This is the body of Christ who is perfect, blameless. I told you about the animals that were sacrificed in the Old Testament. It had to be, a, it had to be a, a lamb that had no spots on it. It had to be perfect. It represented. And they never really did anything. The animals never actually saved anybody. It was symbolic. And so in the same way, this canvas is not going to actually save you. It's symbolic. It's something to, we're going to, this is to put our minds in the right perspective to say, man, I want to get a visual of what it looks like that Jesus took my sins. This dark ink here is our sin, Right? And this is the the blameless body of Christ, and he took our sins on the cross. And so what I want you to do, take a moment after I'm done, take a moment to pray on your own. Just kind of think, maybe even if it's a verbal prayer or just a a, a short time of meditation, we'll have worship or whatever, and then you're going to come up, and you're going to stand, and you're going to put your sins symbolically on the body of Christ, okay? All together we're going to do this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand back and spray it just like that. Just a couple times. Don't have to get too close up on it. Think about that. I want this to be symbolic. I want you to think through that. Just don't come up here willy-nilly. Just think through for a few moments and then come up, spray, and we're going to pray. Is that cool? That's cool. Let's do that. Let's pray, and then we'll have a moment of worship. God, our Father, Thankful that we can call you, Father, because your forgiveness is final. Lord, there's nothing that we can do to be born out of your family once we've been born into it. We thank you so much for your love and your protection. God, your salvation that you made possible for us on the cross. You secured it. Lord, we know we fail. We have failures. (laughs) Our failure... It looms over our head. We know just how far gone we've been. But Lord, we know that your word will let us know that our failure is not final, but forgiveness is. 
And so, Lord, we come with all of our guilt, all of our shame, all the things that will weigh us down, Lord. And tonight we want to we wanna lay them at the cross, myself included, Lord. We just want to lay at the feet of the cross and say, Lord, wash us of any impurities. Lord, wash us of any shame, of any condemnation, of any guilt that we may have, Lord. Because your word, your word tells us, Lord, that there is now no condemnation, not a little bit, not some, but no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ. There's no shame for those of us who are in Christ. And, Lord, we can now come boldly to the throne of grace in the time of need. Not because of anything that we've done. We understand just how far, how far we fall short of your glory, God. But because of everything that Jesus has done for us, Lord. Make us new. Renew our minds. Renew our hearts. Lord, help us to love you and love people better than we did yesterday. More importantly, God, help us to understand just, just how deep your love is already for us. We don't do these things to somehow find acceptance, Lord, but we do it because we've already found acceptance in you. Lord, we love you, not always as we ought to, but we do. Only because you first loved us, Lord, melt the clouds of sin and sadness drive the dark of doubt away, giver of immortal, undying gladness. I pray that you fill everyone in this room with the light of day. Amen. Love y'all.